I know you're an expert on duplexes at this point mm -hmm. and multiplexes are new and that's the topic of this podcast so I want to dive in there. Let's just start with pricing. How do you think these things are going to be priced? Now, I do all different types of uh, real estate. I do a lot of condos, I do a lot of townhomes, um, I do a lot of resale, but my specialty that I have is I actually do a lot of new construction. Okay. And within that new construction, I do a lot of duplexes. Mm -hmm. Now, as you know, in November 2018, City introduced duplexes on RS1. Okay. Okay. Um, at that time, we started seeing more and more duplexes and obviously COVID did not help. So it wasn't until about 2021, 2022, a lot of the builders started getting into duplexes. And as the demand grew, you know, city actually ended up, as we all know, last year they ended up introducing these multiplex. Welcome to another video of our YouTube series on multiplexes in Vancouver. Today my guest is Ron Basra with Remax Realty and I'm really excited to talk to him about multiplexes from his perspective. Today I'm sitting here with Ron Basra. He's one of the top realtors in town, so I'm excited to have him in uh, with Remax Realty. And uh, Ron, uh, over to you. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm excited, you know, uh, great firm to be working with. Uh, many of my clients are working with you guys, so I look forward to this podcast and see what kind of uh, info we can exchange with each other. Awesome. And uh, I'm really curious about how you got into real estate. What, what's your background and, and what brought you to this industry? Uh, long story short, um, I was actually, I was just telling her earlier, I was born in the business. Uh, my dad was moreover a, a developer slash realtor. He didn't do any uh, real estate for others, but he did a lot of uh, real estate for himself. Um, and at the age of nine, 10 years old, I started attending open houses. I started you know, searching real estate. I knew all my zonings. Back nice. then, there weren't that many zonings. There were like, you know, RS1 and, you know, the RT2s and stuff. Um, so I knew all my zonings at a uh, very young age, in 12, 13 years old. Um, I kind of had an idea I wanted to do real estate, but it wasn't until, you know, till late teens or I should say mid-teens that I, you know, said to myself, hey, you know what, I'm going to become a realtor. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so I'm really curious, um, and I know you're an expert on duplexes at this point mm -hmm. and multiplexes are new and that's the topic of this podcast so I want to dive in there. Let's just start with pricing. Okay. How do you think these things are going to be priced? Now I do all different types of uh, real estate. I do a lot of condos. I do a lot of townhomes. Um, I do a lot of resale but my specialty that I have is I actually do a lot of new construction okay. and within that new construction I do a lot of duplexes. Mm -hmm. Now as you know in November 2018 city introduced duplexes on RS1. Okay. Okay. Um, at that time, we started seeing more and more duplexes and obviously COVID did not help. So it wasn't until about 2021, 2022, a lot of the builders started getting into duplexes. And as the demand grew, you know, city actually ended up, as you all know, last year, they ended up introducing these multiplex. Now, we don't actually have any data. I mean, you know, wish I had some data, but you know, from the knowledge that I know, uh, and from what I've heard, there's roughly about 125 applications for multiplex zonings. Uh, to answer your question, the, the, the pricing. Now, the pricing really matters. I think what's gonna happen is, when you have your typical 33 by 122, the mid block, you're gonna have your front duplex, back duplex, a third unit on top of the garage. When you're gonna have a mid block, uh, the privacy is gonna go away. So I don't see those duplexes or those, I should say those multiplex units do as well as duplexes. But when you have a front and back duplex, the back duplex is completely yours. You have your privacy. Mm -hmm. The front people have the front yard. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's very manageable, easy to, you know, to do what with your common property and your limited common property. Now, when it comes to multiplex, the privacy is definitely gonna go away. Unless you want a 33 by 122 lot where you are on a corner one. So I think that will do well. But there are a lot of different factors to it, okay? Um, one thing that's gonna uh, play a role is the garage. Now, when on a duplex, you have your garage, the front, 
unit gets the one garage, the back unit gets the other garage. Now, when it comes to multiplex, now I'm going to talk about 33 by 122, okay? You're going to lose the garage. You're going to have surface parking. Mm -hmm. You're going to have a PMT, a transformer, mm -hmm. um, that is. So you're going to have a lot of things going on. Um, I don't see those mid blocks, especially. I don't see those well doing as well as duplexes. Mm -hmm. I'll touch on the prices in, 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 in a bit. Sure. Uh, but on a 50 by 122, again, all depends on the configuration. If you have two units at the front and then you have two mirror units at the back, I think it's a lot easier to do the configuration. The privacy is going to be very straightforward as long as it's done properly by landscape. Uh, again, uh, they're going to do well, uh, but better than the 33 by 122 mid block ones. Right. Okay. But again, I keep on repeating the surface parking is going to matter. Mm -hmm. Your average person, they want a secured garage. It's kind of funny, even though the buyers who are buying, they don't use these um, garage to park the car. They're just using it for storage. It's a uh, mindset. Yeah. So buyers going to have to accept the fact, look, we live in a world class city and it's okay if you don't have a secure garage. Um, it's okay that we have surface parking because, I mean, look at it now. I mean, uh, I, I, I go to New York quite often and over there, I mean, you're actually parking on the street. Mm -hmm. So in a, in a way, it's good if you actually have parking. It doesn't matter what kind of parking it is. Even if it's site parking, as long as you have parking on your site, I think it's, it's a matter of fact. It'll take some time for people to adapt that. But pricing will you know, not, not be as good as a duplexes pricing, mm -hmm. but it will, you know, take some time before it gets there. Yeah, interesting. And um, I can see how that pricing might compare a bit with uh, duplexes, maybe not be, uh, do quite as well. I'm wondering from neighborhood to neighborhood, how will that change? East side, <coughs> west side? Sure. So now, um, obviously, we all know Vancouver is divided into two parts, the west side Anything west of Ontario is west side. Anything east of Ontario is east side. Now, even within the East Vancouver, I mean, there are some areas that do extremely well. Um, the average, what I've been seeing for duplexes, uh, it's been anywhere from 1000 all the way up to $1,300 per square foot. Okay. Now, if you're in the prime, prime main area, you are getting roughly about 1300 Okay. If you're in the main Fraser, Grandview Woodlands area, you're getting around 1200 or so. Okay. But average, I'm seeing the more that average has jumped up from 1000 to almost $1,100. Okay. Now, the west side, I've seen anywhere from 1600 mm -hmm. to 1800 wow. um, I mean, you know, your prime kits area, your point gray area, I saw a sale come in at almost $1,800 per square foot on a 33 by 122. So it all, at the end of the day, it all depends who the architect is, <laughs> how the plans are done, and who the builder is, and main important location, 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 and yeah. quality. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, you mentioned you work with a lot of builders. Um, you must look at the price of lots, these folks that are out searching for lots to build these. How will multiplex affect the pricing there? Well, I have a saying, I always tell my builders, your profit gets determined when you buy the lot, <clears throat> okay, that's really important. Um, to answer your question about the pricing, how is that gonna affect right now? Um, I think it's gonna take some time before we have actually benchmark prices. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think on a 33 by 122 or a 50 by 122, it's not gonna make, it will make a difference, but not that much of a difference. Okay. Where it will make a difference is on the larger lots where you can go up to six, seven, eight units. Right. Now, I just want to tell your listeners one thing here. Keep in mind, when you have five and more units, mm -hmm. it falls under REDMA, uh, meaning Real Estate Marketing Act. Right. So when you have five and more units, you need to have a disclosure statement. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, the, starts, the, the, the cost starts going up, up, up. Mm. Um, going back to your 33 by 122 or 50 by 122, depending on the configuration, how, the, how they're laid out, mm -hmm. chances are that, you know, each unit will have their own limited common property okay. and you will have very little common property. 
Hmm. If you can actually um, avoid common property, especially with storage or whatever it might be, you will not have any strata fees. Oh, so that's a key. Now, oh. you know, we were talking about earlier uh, townhomes. Now, when you have townhomes, you know, your typical 1500 square feet townhome with 35 cents to 40 cents of um, strata fees per square foot, you're looking at roughly four to five hundred dollars. Okay. What makes these duplexes and these potential multiplex units, if they are done right again, I keep on repeating that, <laughs> you know, chances are you will not have any strata fees. Okay. Okay. Uh, especially now. It could be under the real estate marketing app. You could have five or more units. You technically don't need a management company, but keep in mind, the more units that you have, people want somebody controlling the strata fees or whatever they are. Yeah. So um, I, I, it'll be interesting to see, um, you know, when the first one does sell, how it will do. Yeah. That makes sense. Like with a duplex, easy enough to know your neighbor, uh, who you're sharing that building with maybe it could be a little informal when you start having more people there living on the same site you've got more complicated uh, arrangements agreements to come up with so it yeah. makes sense as you move up yeah. i think it's it's um you know uh, you know i'm confident to say when you have less people that you're dealing with the less the headache it's going to be um again you know when you have i mean but how many 10 20 000 square feet lots do you see in vancouver no, they're not that many right so i don't see you know as long as they're under four units now here's a really important thing that i'm going to tell you yeah now whether you have a front and back duplex or a side-by-side -side duplex or four units on a 50 by 122 mm -hmm. as long you can give each homeowner their yard mm -hmm. you know um uh, some outdoor area that's what the dream is. Everybody wants a, a yard with picket fence with yeah. three bedrooms. And I think, again, depending on the builder uh, and the architect, if that can be provided, these are gonna be a hit. Nice, okay, yeah. that's good, good thinking for uh, anyone developing them. And thinking from the buyer's perspective, like who's buying these units? Who are these really for? Uh, now keep in mind our now I'm gonna give you some numbers now okay you know um, when the whole thing started in 2018 there were 110 duplexes sold in the east side and 71 duplexes sold uh, in the west side okay that number has jumped from 110 to 367 duplexes were sold last year Wow okay and the west side keep in mind 2018 were the 71 duplexes now it's uh, last year went up to 93. So at the moment, we are seeing a lot more duplexes being built um, in the east side. I mean, from 110 to 367 sold duplexes. That's a lot. Jump. Yeah. <laughs> Keep in mind, we had COVID uh, in between. Okay. okay. So it dipped a little bit. It, it, dipped, uh, it dipped a bit, though. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, to answer your question, who's buying this thing here? Uh, when, the, when I first started, du now, I mean, duplexes have been going on. I mean, you know, there were... A lot of duplexes being built in RT5. Like I'm gonna say the grandfather duplex, um, grandfathered uh, zoning duplexes. Right. They were being built a lot. Uh, about 15 years ago, 20 years ago, mm -hmm. I was seeing a lot of young families buying these. When I say by young family, I'm talking about husband, wife, you know, two young kids or one young kid. Mm -hmm. Now the whole thing has changed. In the last five years, I'm seeing, you know, a lot of single people buying. You know, mm -hmm. uh, just you know husband and wife you know with no kids buying okay. another th interesting factor that i'm seeing right now is the the parents of the kids who have already bought they're selling their west side home for two and a half three million dollars okay. and buying something for two million oh. and they're banking the rest of the money to be closer to the kids oh. i'm seeing a lot of that <laughs> another thing i'm seeing is uh, right now i'm seeing actually you know the elderly parents and their kids buying together. So I'm gonna see. I'm seeing more and more of this happening too. Hmm. Uh, but now you're seeing all sort of different um, demographic, you know, buying. Uh, again, you know, um, I was we were talking about condos and townhomes. Um, again, the strata fee, you know, on a 
thousand square feet, you know, or fifteen hundred square feet, when you're paying the four hundred, five hundred, six hundred dollars per month, that is kind of going down the drain. If you can save that, because on a condo you're you're not gonna have your yard. Townhome, yeah, maybe, but it's more feels like a home when you're buying on a duplex or on a multiplex. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm actually looking forward to the first one being built and the first sale coming up. Yeah, it's worth yeah. mentioning that none of them built yet. Yeah. So <laughs> no one's actually buying these things yet because it's impossible. Um, I'm sure there's some similar things on the market, but yeah. in terms of the strict multiplex regulation, that's something that interests me actually in terms of the buyer profile. With multiplex, you can have a front and a rear building, like a laneway, but you could even have two units back there. So will the buyer profile be different between those two? Um, I don't see that happening. Okay. Um, I think it's personal preference. Um, when these buyers are buying these duplexes, I'm giving duplexes as an example, that's a, you know, very similar to multiplex here. Um, what we find is a lot of buyers are wanting a south facing backyard. Mm -hmm. So those are the kind of preferences that I have, uh, that I'm, I see. Um, and uh, one of the things that, I mean, I get asked over and over uh, and the builders have a very tough time providing that. Mm -hmm. It's not the builders cannot do, it's, it's, it's actually because they're very limited to the city zoning bylaws. Mm -hmm. One of the buyers I keep on asking is, they need storage, storage, and storage. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, one of the things that we have been able to um, fill that need is by putting crawl spaces. Oh, nice. So, I um, mean, if you can have crawl spaces with storage, it's nothing like that, right? Um, and so that's one thing that I'm, I'm seeing a lot of buyers and wanting storage. And if you can you know, impl implement that in a multiplex, that will be really good. Um, another thing that I actually find from um, the buyers, um, you know, these duplexes uh, that are being built are typically built on three levels, meaning right. main floor, you have your living room, dining room, kitchen, the middle floor, you have two bedrooms, one bathroom or sometimes two bathrooms and a third bedroom on top. So one of the complaints other than the stories that I get is if all the three bedrooms can be on one level, that will be, you know, amazing. Uh, that will, that's what the people want to see. Now think about it. When you have two bedrooms on a middle level, you have your husband and wife with two kids, you know, young kids I'm talking about, right? You know, no parent want to sleep on the top and leave the kids at the, in the middle floor. Uh, even for a lot of the elderly people that are buying, they don't like to go up and down with so many stairs. So if we can avoid that somehow, so uh, again, that's gonna really depend on the, on the height restrictions and also on the builder, as also on the, um, the architect. If we can somehow apply that, again, these are gonna be, uh, the multiplex are gonna be a very big hit. Nice. Okay. So you talked about layout, you talked about storage, you talked about yard space. Are there any other features that these buyers will be looking for in multiplexes? You know, um, it's, 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 uh, your average person, you know, they rather have quality over features, right? You know, um, they want top of the line appliances, nice. but when it comes to home automation, you know, that is a, are more like a luxury. Um, so people, in, in my opinion, they, they, the two things that like that they want is quality and location, uh, other than other items that we mentioned earlier. But I mean, if, if, if a house had ho um, home automation, how much is that gonna sell, uh, you know, over with the house that has no home automation, very hard to say. Um, another th question that I keep on getting asked is, you know, hey, um, what's, let's talk, I mean, you know, talk about solar system, uh, you know, or let's talk about passive homes or, you know, net zero homes. Um, I think the buyers, especially in Vancouver, they are not really, you know, um, when it comes to net zero or passive, they're not really educated. They don't know the savings that can happen. And even with, when it comes to solar panels, I think it will take time uh, before you can re recover that cost. 
the problem that we have is the construction prices have gone up so much. So I rather not have those features such as solar panels, net zero, passive, or or home automation. Just provide the quality, top of the line appliances, and give the good location and a layout. That's what people are wanting to see. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, quality build. Yeah, and uh, yeah, you certainly see that around town. Some that look really great, just you know, curb appeal, and some less so. People are cutting corners, so it makes sense. You know, yeah, buyers are looking yeah. for that. So you talked a little bit, I'm thinking about the future. Um, you talked about some applications in the city. Of course, we have a few internally. How many of these are you expecting to come to market? Like, is this going to be a big splash in 2025? I think it's going to take time. Now, let's go back in 2018. You know, uh, the data that I have, I'm just talking, I'm talking about East Side. There were only 110 uh, duplexes uh, that were sold. Um, and I don't know how many were uh, built. I mean, you know, it can't be more than that, uh, right? Not, not substantially more than that. Um, at the moment, I don't see that many. Now, another thing that's not helping us at the moment right now is obviously the high interest rates, okay? So we always have factors that kind of prevents us to not to build. Obviously, when we uh, when they introduced in 2018 the duplexes, we got hit with COVID. Now we've been hit with high, historically high interest rates. Um, you know, uh, based on my experience, if we did not have um, high interest rates, the 125 applications, in my opinion, it would have been double that. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, it's still really exciting. Do you see this uh, being attractive when they finally do come to the market? Or do you expect this to be really great for the, for the builders that are selling them? Um, just to kind of recap, um, as long, you know, we can provide uh, your living, dining, kitchen, eating area on a one level and provide the three bedrooms, spacious bedrooms on one level, have the storage, have your picket fence, you know, I think these and provide the quality. I think these are going to be hit. Keep in mind, and as long as it doesn't have any strata fees attached to it, right. these are definitely going to be a hit. Um, nobody, I mean, yes, depending on you know who you are, but your average person, you know, nobody wants to pay uh, the strata fees. There are people that they don't want, and yes, they are more than welcome to you know, uh, live in a condo or a townhouse and then not worry about any maintenance, but your average person, I'm gonna say about 70% of the people to 80% of the people wanna be in a home, what we just talked about. Okay, well, uh, thanks a lot for your insight here. I'm just wondering, is there anything else that you wanna share on multiplexes in Vancouver? Um, you know, um, as you know, um, city has penalized you if you were to build a single family home. So it's down to, you know, from 70% to 60%, it's gone down 10%. Mm -hmm. um, my say is because I do a lot of brand new um, homes, I do a lot of single, brand new single family homes, duplexes, and I'm going to be doing a lot of multiplex too. Okay. I always say, let the home owner make that decision, what they want to do with their piece of land. Mm -hmm. uh, it should not be up to if, for example, myself, uh, I live in a single family home, I don't have a laneway, I don't have a basement suite. That's according, the house is built according to my needs. However, uh, if let's say um, my colleague might want the income from a laneway or from the basement suite, you know? Uh, so everyone, every person is, they have their different needs. Therefore, I always say let the buyer make that decision. But going back, you know, if we can provide that, the dream home that we've been talking about, I think that's going to be a, a big, big hit. And hopefully we have some uh, folks from the planning department listen to this and uh, those that are making these decisions. So that would be really helpful. Yeah. I totally yeah. agree with you. Well, one of the things that I'm actually um, talking to City is uh, to increase. Uh, I still think um, one of the things that we didn't talk about is single family homes. Mm -hmm. Now, as Nobody, well, I shouldn't say nobody. I mean, fewer and fewer builders are building single family homes because it makes more profitable to do duplexes and multiplex. Mm -hmm. 
I think single family homes are going to be, uh, uh, you know, a rare commodity. Mm -hmm. So as a duplexes, because mm -hmm. it will make more sense to do multiplex, it will be more profitable. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, duplexes are going to be just, again, another, you know, rare commodity. Okay. Um, now keep in mind, there is a cost to do the multiplex, right? And we didn't talk about that. We got the PMT, yeah. right? We got the uh, detention pond, mm -hmm. right? That we would worry about or the detention tank. Third thing is we got to pay for the extra DCCs, right? Mm -hmm. So um, it all has to make sense. Um, and, you know, I know one thing that given about another 10, 15 years, our landscape of Vancouver is going to completely change. Mm -hmm. Um, keep in mind, we are a world-class city mm -hmm. and uh, it's going to get better and better uh, with help of, you know, firm, and then, you know, like uh, your guys' firm and <laughs> with good city planners and with good builders, hopefully, you know, we can make the city a lot more better. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I, I totally agree that this is overall making the city better and allowing more people to come and enjoy it. So. Yeah. Um, well, that's awesome, Ron. Um, is there some way for our listeners to find you or a way they could follow you going forward if they want to work yes, together? Yes, definitely. I mean, you know, uh, the listeners can always uh, give me a call. Okay. Um, my number will get displayed at the, at the bottom, my yep. email, and you can follow me on uh, Instagram, Facebook, you know, uh, email me or just call me or text me and I'm always uh, reachable. Awesome. Well, thanks so much again for being here, Ron. And uh, yeah, looking forward to working Thank with you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Hey, I really hope you enjoyed that interview with Ron Vassar. He's a really great connection of ours and we really enjoyed working with them on different projects. Look, if you haven't done so already, definitely check out our YouTube channel because there's lots more tips on there and definitely subscribe as well. We'll be bringing you lots more interviews just like this one in our Multiplex Shaping Vancouver series. We are Victor Eric Design and Build and we create amazing spaces. 